Hey y'all, about 40 years ago, movies on video became common. I was very excited. For the first time, I could see all those movies I'd only read about as a kid. You see, it was tough to see movies in the old days, in the 60s and 70s. You could pretty much only see movies when they hit the theaters, or maybe more if you saw a lot of double features at the drive-in, but you were still limited to movies that were newish at the time. If I wanted to see an old horror movie, I had to find it on the TV, like late night. I did manage to find some this way, but the really gory stuff, of course, wasn't shown then. Also, since I grew up in Utah, it was hard to find other guys who liked horror to hang out with. Anyway, this is an attempt to explain why when movies appeared on videotape, I immediately became a collector. If you ever come to my house and you want to see a horror movie you've never seen, I guarantee I've got some, both good and bad. Now, there's a man named Michael Medved who started out in the 70s writing some books about bad movies, and he made enjoying bad movies into a real thing. So here's the deal. I can enjoy a good movie, and I can enjoy a bad movie if it's entertaining, but a dull movie is just the worst. That's why a really terrible movie like the horror of Party Beach is actually really fun for me, and the critically acclaimed snooze fest of Cold Mountain is a drag. Every minute of Party Beach is a delight. Even the terrible script and the special effects make it more fun. While for me, the dull, dragging, artsy crap of Cold Mountain made me hate it, even though I love the Civil War time period. Also, Man Alive, it lasted two and a half hours. Ugh. Horror of Party Beach was only 78 minutes, and every minute has something exciting. In the first five minutes, there's a cool fist fight, a beach band playing the zombie stomp, and a girl gets killed by a monster. What more could you ask for? So yeah, bad, interesting movies are way better to me than dull, well-made movies. I think this should be obvious to everyone who didn't learn about film by watching French art movies. So I started looking up some of the directors who did bad movies. Now, Michael Medved wrote a book called The Golden Turkey Awards, and in this, he mentions, he lists Herschel Gordon Lewis as one of the four worst directors of all time. Now, he doesn't give Lewis the top prize for worst director. He saves that for Ed Wood, and I can't say that Ed Wood doesn't deserve it. So Medved's article, though, about uh, Lewis focuses on how Lewis's movies are really gory, and that's about all he says about it. He, I guess Medved didn't like bloodthirsty movies, so he thought the fact that it was bloody made it bad. I mean, a lot of people in, in the day used to think that. Anyway, I decided that I was going to see some of Mr. Lewis's movies to see what they were really like. And man alive, they're not just gory. I mean, they're gory, right? But they're terrible. I mean, the scripts are terrible. The special effects are terrible. The acting is terrible. The sets are terrible. The plots are idiotic. Even the lighting is terrible. The soundtrack is terrible. I can't believe Mr. Medved was so transfixed by that nasty blood and guts, mostly bought by Mr. by Herschel Gordon Lewis from like the local slaughterhouse. He missed all the other bad things. So, of course, I immediately became a huge fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis. And what I've been able to make up about Mr. Lewis is that he seems to have been personally reprehensible. He didn't do movies because he loved movies. Ed Wood did, not Lewis. He did it because he wanted to make money. As a result, his movies don't actually get better over time. Usually movie makers, their films improve. Not, uh, not Herschel Gordon Lewis. When he got better at a movie, he probably got better by making more money or, or being cheaper. He didn't care about the quality. They're just for a quick buck. Later on, he actually went into direct marketing, which of course we all hate. He even wrote a book about it, which I own. Herschel Gordon Lewis didn't love his fans. In one of his commentary tracks, which I recommend by the way, the partner with him on the track, an enthusiastic kid asked him, why don't your movies have subtitles? And Lewis said, I'm not sure my fans can read. <laughs> So that uh, was pretty funny, but it's like, wow, says it all about Mr. Lewis. Anyway, that's enough about why he sucks. Let's talk about his movies. So his first gore movie was Blood Feast. Now, apparently what happened is he had some film stock left over after something else he'd done, and he brainstormed with his producer to think of something to exploit. On the list they put together, the idea of gore really stood out. So they did Blood Feast. We start out with a guy called Fuad Ramses who runs a catering business. He's He also worships the goddess Ishtar, which mysteriously is called Eta throughout it instead of Ishtar. I don't know, maybe it's because the guy can't pronounce anything. Anyway, he's killing girls and taking pieces of them to make his blood feast. And the movie has is way over the top 
and really stupid. There's a scene where Mr. Ramses is running away from some cops and Ramses has a limp, like a really bad limp. And the cops can't, who are young fit guys, can't catch him and he keeps getting away. You keep, they show him running, they get closer and closer and then like Ramses didn't bleed. And apparently what actually happened is that Herschel Gordon Lewis said, okay, look, Ford Ramses is going to run away and you can't catch him. But the actors playing the cops were so stupid they couldn't figure it out. And they kept catching him and then he had to stop just before they caught him and refilm with him in the back again, redo it again, until he finally showed Mr. Ford getting away. There's also, here's an example of the soundtrack. There's the, a drunken guy and a drunken woman get out of a car that they park. They're obviously drunk. They've been drunk driving. In the 60s, this was you know like it wasn't perceived as the terrible crime it is now i think it was just as bad then as it is now but no one treated it that way um and they get out and they're staggering up to the room and the soundtrack i kid you not plays drunkenly how dry i am on a cello and that's the musical background it's like wow anyway so i showed this to a friend who'd only heard the legend of Herschel gordon lewis and he said well i'm glad i busted that cherry lewis was worse than i imagined yeah but i really liked him anyway because it was entertaining though stupid now his second gore movie was called 2000 maniacs and in this movie these people go to this little town in the south and uh given that the audience of Herschel gordon lewis was mostly people going to double features in at drive-in movies in the south it's weird that the south is like the bad guys but oh well anyway the 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 2000 maniacs guy tortured the four people to death in various interesting ways and it is again highly entertaining uh they do try to explain away why there's 2000 maniacs in the town at the end and i guess they kind of succeed but mostly it's just fun to watch he's actually pretty good at filming rednecks and having them be a hoot and holler even when they're crazy evil guys so uh you know i liked it his next gore movie was called color me blood he did i i keep saying his next gore movie because in between these he'd do like a nudie cutie which back in the day was a movie where a girl doffed her top because they didn't have real porn in the same way so you people you go see see movies that were like strip teases and stuff. Anyway, he did a few other movies like that. And he also did some other redneck movies about moonshine and stuff or making funny hillbillies. But Gore, his next one was called Color Me Blood Red. Now, Color Me Blood Red has an artist who discovers that only blood will be the right color for his paintings. And right off the bat, you can tell this is stupid because, well, I mean, blood changes color after it dries it doesn't look red anymore it looks black or dark red at best but in the movie not only does it stay bright red but it actually like stays wet and it, they never i would have i would have accepted this if they given some reason like i'm adding a stabilizer to the blood so it stays red no he just paints with the blood right out of you know, you know that was kind of stupid if you want to see a good movie about a um an artist who kills people. I'd recommend Bucket of Blood by Roger Corman. It's only about an hour long, and this time it's a sculptor. He finds out that somehow, like, early on he kills a cat, and he and it puts, and somehow he turns it into a sculpture. He covers it in, uh, in clay, and this makes a sculpture of the cat somehow, and he starts being a big hit, so he starts murdering people and having them be the sculptures, and it's pretty stupid, but it's also super fun, and it's highly entertaining. So Color Me Blood Red is stupid, like Bucket of Blood, but, but like, way stupider. And um, one of the, it has one of the features that becomes a common thing in Herschel Gordon Lewis movies, which is that the boyfriends of the girls are really maddeningly horrible. I always, I always hate them, and I think you will too. So uh, the good news is if they get killed, it's awesome. Of course, some they are always killed, and that's sad. Now, after he did uh, Color Me Blood Red with the killer artist, um, he did a vampire movie called A Taste of Blood. Now, I haven't seen it yet. Um, Herschel Gordon Lewis, I own it, but I just haven't seen it. Herschel Gordon Lewis said it was his best movie, but I'm not sure how he'd know since he's just a bad filmmaker. Maybe someday I'll watch it, but it seems a little long for me to sit through a Herschel Gordon Lewis movie. It's like two hours. Okay, his next movie in the gore scene was called The Gruesome Twosome. This one he tries to have comedy, and it's about a wig shop where there's a um a mentally handicapped guy and he's mentally handicapped in the style that when you were uh, eight years old you did when you're trying to make fun of a fellow roommate you know <laughs> like this which like real mentally handicapped people aren't usually like that but he was so and then there's an old lady who uh, uh talks to her stuffed cat and basically the idea is that they can kill people and take their hair and somehow this is 
a good way to make wigs for sale. The comedy comes from the girl in it. He tries to, um, she tries to spy and figure out the killer. And there is a real killer, so it's a real thing. And her husband, her boyfriend, who actually works for the cops, constantly puts her down and makes fun of her and won't let her go look for the dad. And he's, he's just terrible. He almost doesn't save her at the end, but sadly he does. So uh, also the opening for a gruesome twosome, you have to see to be believed the opening sequence because it's just it's I won't even try to describe it just watch the first few minutes of gruesome twosome and your jaw will drop to the floor as like what was he thinking so uh and then maybe that won't make you watch the rest of the movie and that's fine but at least you should see that now in between doing the gore films like I said he did other movies he did biker movies he did the nudies and he made the two worst children movies of all time the magic land of mother goose which is super bad and Jimmy the Boy Wonder. Now, Magic Land of Leather Goose, apparently what he did was he simply filmed a stage, like a high school stage, where people were doing a ma like a magic show going back and forth, and it's just like, the camera never budged, it just shows m things happening, and it's really static, and it's hard to hear what's going on, and it's a massive pain to watch. Jimmy the Boy Wonder is absolutely bonkers. Jimmy makes a wish that time will stop, so it does, and then evil Mr. Fig, who is never said to be a child molester, but like really obviously is, is trying to stop him, and there's this um, plump girl who apparently was the daughter of the, of the guy who backed the movie, so she's in it, and they have to go against this, and they find Indians, they eat nothing but jelly beans, and it just is... The, the songs are bad and the jokes are bad and the movie's bad and it's super entertaining and uh, I recommend that you watch it with a friend to share the pain. Anyway, Lewis, though he did these other things, eventually like a dog to its vomit, he returned to gore. After Drusen Tusum, he seemed to have wanted to do something artsy, so we got The Wizard of Gore. Now, The Wizard of Gore um, is, is weird and it makes no sense. Uh, it makes no sense because, like, here's what happens. You have the wizard who's, like, in a high school stadium or something or somewhere, right? And what he does, he does magic tricks, and they're, like, sawing a woman in half and stuff like that. But he, um, but he kills them, and then they're okay again, and they go back to the audience, and then later on they fall apart. So they're dead again. And then they have a scene where he drags the bodies off in this red-lit weird gel and buries them in a, in a sepulcher or something. It's not quite clear. Um, but, but it's got the amazing uh, guy that plays the wizard. Now, the wizard is especially terrible. The opening scene when he's first showing off his stuff. What he does, he starts off, his first magic trick is he puts his head into a guillotine and cuts it off. That is a killer start. Then he's he's okay afterwards. And then he does a magic trick where he's pouring water back and forth into glasses and one of the glasses doesn't have the water. It's like a real pedestrian, like an eighth grade magic trick. It's like, that's the, like, you don't start with cutting your head off, then go to the pouring water. I mean... Cutting your own head off has got to be an ending thing. Anyway, now the deaths also look super fake, which is which is awesome. Like there's a scene where he's killing girls by making them swallow swords. And so one of the things is he's got these swords and the sword, the girls who have been killed, the sword sticking out of the mouth, the hilt sticking out like this, which the sword is supposed to be long and goes like in a bend. It was it made of what's going on here, you know? And uh, and the girls also are standing up, hanging from chains, except their legs are straight and stiff and their arms are limp. It was like if you're dead and hanging from chains, shouldn't you hang with your arms up? It was just it's just every little detail that he could get wrong, he gets wrong. He doesn't miss a step. Now, Wizard of Gore got a remake about 10 years ago with Colin Farrell. Go figure, right? One of my friends just about lost his mind watching Wizard of Gore. And this is because at the end of Wizard of Gore, okay, what happens is Montag the Magnificent, the evil magician, has been defeated, apparently. And so the girl is talking to her boyfriend about the terrible Montag the Magnificent. And she starts she starts listing the flaws in the movie. She said, why did they get better and then die again? What are they going to do with the bodies? How did Montag die by falling into a fire when he was trying to lead us into the fire to kill us? And all these these plot points that are holes. And my friend is like, yeah, yeah. And, and then just as you're expecting him to explain everything, let me just say he doesn't. In fact, he ends with another huge mystery that is even stupider. And my friend just about died. And then he said, 
My, my friend said, This makes me want to go back and rewrite the movie, but the tragedy is my rewritten movie, though it would make sense, would probably not be as fun to watch as his original thing, so that sucks. Anyway, those are his, some of his formal gore movies. He had others. He did Hillbilly Moonshine things, which I kind of like. He did a movie about witches. One of the great ones about the witches is there's a witch who looks beautiful to everyone else except to her, the boy she, that has to, to court her. Said he has to stick with her or, you know, She'll do something terrible. So he's with this hideous old woman all the time. But everyone else thinks she's a hot babe. So that was kind of fun. He also did political dramas. If you're on the left, as many of my friends are, you can be sad that Herschel Gordon Lewis was also on the left. Um, because I'm sure you wouldn't want to uh, claim this guy. His worst movie, in my opinion, sorry, the movie that I hate the most of his is The Gore Gore Girls. This one is the first gore movie where he actually had some topless stuff. He usually kept his nudie movies and his gore separately. And this one, he tries really hard to make the gore gore girls funny, but it fails dismally. I really hate this movie. By the way, there's a band called the gore gore girls. I have no problem with them, but man alive, this movie. The main actor is so devoid of charisma, he angered me. He's like, he's the worst. Worst. There's a scene where the guy where the guy cuts off a nipple and blood and milk comes out. I mean, she's not pregnant or nursing, but who knows? Then he cuts off the other nipple and chocolate milk comes out. And it's horrible and it's sleazy and it's gross and it's stupid and it's not funny. And it's like, oh man. Anyway, that's my stab at Blood Herschel Gordon Lewis. So I'd say watch Blood Feast and see if you like it. If you do, check out some more. Except only watch the Gore Gore Girls if you're a sucker. Ugh. Thank you for watching me. Get notifications, you can subscribe to me, and I have things for sale, and I will soon have more. Thanks!